Hello, my name is Austin Kick, and I'm the Director of Programs and Innovations for HEC 96. I'm excited to bring to you two days of amazing programming from industry leaders around the world. In preparation for these two days of the conference, we pre-recorded some segments, but made sure to adhere all of Cornell University's COVID-19 policies, as well as those put out by the CDC. We look forward to seeing you in Ithaca next year, and hope that you can enjoy the next two days of programming in your own home. In a time where in-person interactions are not always possible, we have been forced to find new ways to connect with people. Technology has driven that mission to stay connected both in a personal and professional setting. Within HEC, our students have had the opportunity to experience international collaborations as we have team members working from all corners of the world to put this conference together. The hospitality industry is extremely people-centric, so sometimes it may seem that including technology within our industry will take away that human touch. But this block will prove just the opposite, how technology is bringing our industry together like never before, how technology is enhancing the guest experience, how technology does not need to replace the personal manner in which we interact with our guests, and how technology is building a stronger future for our industry. To kick this block off, we welcome Ron Swidler and Roger Hill from the Gettys Group to showcase some of their newest technologies and collaborations from within the hospitality design industry. Well, hello. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you all very much for welcoming Ron and I back. I'd like to thank uh, the Dean of the Hotel School, Dean Walsh, and the Hotel Ezra Cornell Board. It's a real thrill for Ron and I to participate in HUC, and we had had the opportunity to do now do it for four years. Sadly, last year was virtual. We were kicking off the Cornell uh, with uh, HUC, and um, we're excited to be back, and I reflected Brian and I both had a chance to watch uh, our presentation from uh, last year, and we talked about this uh, crisis and uh, where we uh, were as, at the beginning, and I'm just uh, happy that we obviously are in a very different place today, and I think we're in a very positive glide scope where we're balancing health and science, and now really can see recovery for the hospitality industry and entertainment industry, and we're very excited to share with you these consumer trends that are are reshaping 2020 and have, are now really moving forward into 2021 and, and beyond. So with that said, I look forward to spending the next hour with all of you and thank you. Thanks, Raj, and I look forward to spending the next hour with you as well. Um, I did want to have a couple of other thank yous, um, not only to our colleagues that help us do uh, this research, but also to our friends at Trend Watching, uh, who have been great strategic partners to the company Again, how important is it uh, to our business and to our industry to be aware of how things have changed um, and what those consumer and guest expectations are? Again, our goal is to make sure that we're, um, you know, we're creating services and products that appeal to those travelers. And boy, have things changed over the past year. Let's, uh, it, let's start the presentation. That's my cue for please advance. The next slide, slide, please. Yeah. <laughs> 2020 changed and reprioritized human needs and ways, and changing what people and guests will expect in 2021. And the next slide, please. 
Those changed human needs led to unstoppable innovation. Next slide, please. This is a great example of a young woman graduating from the University of Indiana and saying, hey, this is going to be my experience and my memory and uh, thrilled to see all this interesting innovation for consumers throughout. Next slide, please. And uh, obviously, religious ceremonies had to be changed uh, differently. So this is a, a new way of receiving communion. Next slide. And this is a really fun one that uh, Dos Equis came up with. They created a six-foot cooler uh, that allows people to, as I like to say, and we say here at the Gettys Group companies, physically distance, not socially distance, because we all wanted to be safely social throughout the crisis, enjoy a cold beer, and um, be with friends. Next slide, please. COVID-19 poured on rocket fuel for consumers' expectations. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, let's advance the next slide, please. Thank you. So we're going to spend a minute talking about this slide because there's, there's a lot to say here. And, and then on the following two slides, we're going to explain what we mean by this. Um, right. So the consumer's expectation of cha has changed, right, in seven major ways. And if you want to think about how your business and your services need to change over the course of this next year and beyond, Think about these seven things, okay? Health and well-being, critically important to today's and tomorrow's consumers. Connection, more important than ever. Convenience, peace of mind, entertainment, trust, and fairness. Let's pick those apart a little bit, one at a time. But again, the events of this past year had a huge impact on everyone's lives, and it's changed their expectations. And what we can do as service providers uh, in this industry is make sure that we are providing um, ways to, to resolve some of these issues for our guests. Let's advance to the next slide, please. Thank you. Health and well-being, a renewed focus on hygiene, preventative health, mental health, home workouts, and a great, greater use of telehealth. I'm sure we've all experienced all of those. Shift to digital. Deeper, oh, sorry, Ron. Go ahead. So, so um, you you go ahead if you'd like, Raj. I think um, I, it's up to you. I, oh, I was okay. gonna go I was gonna cover I was gonna cover the big topic, and I think you were gonna provide a little bit more color on this one. Okay. I was the play by play man. You were the color commentary. All right. Um, all right. So um, so again, if we if we look at the major ways that the consumer has changed their expectation and their lives have changed. Um, the second one is about connection, right? We're all feeling a much deeper connection to people, even though we're further apart. And we're relying upon the, uh, these digital tools like the ones we're dealing with right now to have that digital, digital interaction. There's a huge surge, not only in video chat and platforms, but also social media usage. So the underscore here is think about the way that your brands are utilizing social media, because there is a a deeper usage, a much higher usage than ever before as it relates to social media. Anything that you wanted to layer on a statistic sure, about connections, to. Raj? Yeah, thanks, Ron. So 59% of consumers in Europe are now much more conscious about their overall health as a result of COVID-19, and 72% of them plan to eat and drink a healthier diet. So I think that is, you know, an amazing fact. And then regarding connection, 180 million people are using social media. Uh, they did from July of, of uh, 2020 to September. And from that three month period, there was almost an additional 2 million more users per day in that three month period. Right, so, so I guess to, to highlight that then, we're seeing a huge uptick in social media usage. Um, because people want to feel connected to one another, they also need to feel connected to the brands because they're making different decisions today than they did previously. And part of that is around convenience, right? We've seen an enormous rise in e-commerce usage, a preference for supporting those local businesses. It might be that restaurant around the corner that you have an affinity for that you want to help survive the pandemic. And so there is a deeper relationship between either you as a service provider and your local community or you as someone who lives in the community and the relationship that you have to those more convenient outlets nearby. So um, 
you know, there, there's been a lot of focus on, on convenience during this period of time. Uh, let's move on to the next slide and we'll take you through numbers four through seven um, as it relates to that profile of the new consumer. So peace of mind is a huge uh, issue. Look, because are we, are we, uh, <laughs> are we taking care of ourselves in a time that is more tumultuous than ever before, that the notion of mindfulness and giving people a better sense of peace of mind is a responsibility and opportunity for all businesses. And we've, saw, we've seen all kinds of innovation around that. We're gonna cover a few of those later in the presentation. There's also been huge upsurge in entertainment consumption, not just a shift to uh, streaming services, there's plenty of that, but also gaming activities and we'll give you a few examples today of how um, this new kind of higher level of usage and adoption of gaming platforms has led to some interesting innovations. Uh, moving to trust, look, this is a, uh, 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 an interesting 24 months as you analyze trust and trust in brands and trust in information. Um, and so uh, being a trustworthy brand, a trustworthy provider, um, is more important than ever. So uh, certainly things that you can do and we can do to enhance our trustworthiness um, is critically important. And then lastly, there's also a notion of fairness. Look, the, um, we all, this was a global and is still a global pandemic. We are all affected by this. And as a result of that and some of the social injustice that took place over the past year, um, there is an even higher level of importance on fairness and what you are doing as an individual, as a company, as a community to promote fairness. So all of these things taken in aggregate create amazing opportunities for us to think about the service we're providing, the relationships that we have, this notion of focusing on health and well-being, connection, convenience, peace of mind, entertainment, trust and fairness is just critically important. So if uh, I can impose on you to advance to hey, Rob, the next slide. Please. Mr. Yes, Bob, Rob. I just, I just wanted to add one interesting statistic on as it relates to entertainment and the consumers. Uh, yeah. $20 billion worth of mobile games were purchased in the third quarter of 2020, and that was up 5% from the year before. And then in Europe, TikTok reached 100 million users in September of 2020. So the whole entertainment side of things has just been an, an incredibly explosive thing as it relates to the new consumer of today. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, no, I'm look, you're right, Raj. It isn't just that more people are seeking forms of entertainment, um, but new platforms or existing platforms have blown up. Um, you know, you, you, you talk about TikTok. I could mention Clubhouse is another example of just, uh, a platform that that all of a sudden has has grown in importance in our lives as a form of connectivity and entertainment and business. Um, Let's face it; they're going to be great tools for all of you hotel, restaurant tours, entertainment people to use to promote your brands. Absolutely. Okay, so on to the trends. Let's advance, please, and thank you to the next slide. These are the three trends we're going to be talking about today, and the way that Roger and I have done this historically is help you understand kind of the macro trend itself, brand care, creative challengers, and the contactless economy. Uh, we'll bring you into a deeper understanding of what that means. And then we're gonna show you some examples. We'll tell you why that's important now, why, why this trend is growing in importance now. We'll cite some examples of companies that are em, uh, embracing each of these three trends. And then we'll talk about what is next for the world and what is next for hospitality. Okay, that's the format we're gonna follow. Uh, if we can advance to the next slide, we'll take you a little deeper into brand care. So brand care is really about um, how we can, as brands, provide a deeper level of care uh, to our consumers, to our brand loyalists. Uh, remember, the, the, this new health economy has had a huge impact on, um, on our world. And the question is, are you ready as a company to be supportive of that new health economy? Uh, advancing to the next slide, please. 
I'll explain the why now um, for each of these major trends. Okay, so, so we have brand responders. And by brand responders, we mean um, brands that have pivoted um, to change, to capitalize on opportunities, but also to take care of the needs of the public. You had lots of brands changing what they were producing and how they were delivering it. Their entire supply chains were um, kind of rethought. And um, brands as carers, the last line there, brands as carers remained, um, even though the need for things like PPE may have fallen off, look at um, the way that companies like Baxter are stepping in to support companies like Pfizer. Um, again, it's a uh, put the world first kind of opportunity and brands that are stepping up are changing the way that they're perceived by the public. And that certainly can be true for the hospitality industry as well. Let's not minimize the importance of mental health, right? The demand for mental health services are rising and have risen in an enormous way. We have to be cognizant of the fact that this has been a very, very stressful period for all of us and the brands that are considering the mental health of their employees um, and of their customers are certainly um, growing um, their, fan, their, their, their fan base, their loyalty base um, of the, among their consumers. Prevention, not cure, meaning what there's far more interest in preventative health care than ever before. This will lead us to more health and wellness focus uh, and healthfulness overall. Um, and there are lots of things that hotels can do to be in the preventative health care category as it relates to food and beverage and fitness, et cetera. And the last thing to consider of why, why this brand care trend has grown in importance now is frankly, it's good business. Health is big, big business, uh, and it's only getting bigger as you look at the swelling of the demographics of aging populations around the world. So there's lots of reasons why brand care has grown in importance. Let's advance to the next slide and give you some specific examples around those. Thank you. Raj? Yeah. And then just uh, as it relates to that trend, not only is tech blowing up, but also uh, in the health area, Unilever anticipates a billion dollars being spent on meatless products uh, in 2022 and 2023. So huge opportunities there. Slingshot's you know, really sort of uh, flipping the switch here. It's a very interesting uh, gaming company that sort of said, hey, how do we take um, esports production and partner with a mental health care company rise above uh, to provide therapy sessions while people were gaming. So they saw an incredible uptick in gaming and uh, during the crisis and said, hey, let's bring people together for free that can game uh, registered therapists with people that are enjoying our games and help them through the crisis. So, so just a terrific way of extending brand care in a really positive way, and I'm sure bringing many more loyalists to their platform. Next so Raj, let, let, let's, let's, no, hang on a sec. Let's unpack this one for a second. Okay. Um, so what happened? We have, a, we, have a, we have a crisis that is affecting the entire world. There's a high level of stress and people are turning to entertainment, right? That all relates back to what we just talked about. What happened? People were playing games to get a lot of their um, to have escapism, right? To find, to find themselves in an immersive gaming environment. But they were also using games as a place for people to um, vent uh, some of that frustration and, 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 and certainly a shoot 'em up game, first person uh, shooter might be a way to do that. So that's why Skillshot, who's paying attention, they're a game provider, they're an online provider. They know what the game usage patterns are and, and they've said, hey, we need to step in here and try to make a difference. I love that this is a company saying, and this is going to our earlier point, what can companies do? What can brands do to provide brand care? Here's a great example of that. Let's drop therapists into the game. And I watched some videos of what this looks like. And people are just like hanging out with people while they're playing the games virtually and having conversations about their anxiety levels. So, um, Let's advance to the next slide, and uh, and and I'll talk about the the next the next example of brand care. It's Microsoft Teams. It's a it's a it's an app that, frankly, we were not using very much before no. the pandemic. But no. how could we run our business, Raj, without uh, without it? Now it's impossible because we are on it constantly. And um, this sounds like a Microsoft commercial. But um, to their credit, there's been a lot of innovation around 
um, shared platforms for communication like uh, Microsoft Teams. So anyway, Teams is doing something really fun. They noticed that um, the way that people are using Teams, jumping from meeting to meeting without a break in between, or shutting their computers down and saying, hey, my day is over, um, really isn't great for your mental health. So they've created a virtual commute, which essentially is a, a transition period between stopping working or starting working um, and whatever preceded it or follows. And so um, they've introduced some ways to even take a headspace guide to meditation at the end of the day or before your day. Um, and I think it's a real clever way of a brand, again, providing brand care and saying, hey, how, what can we do to help people? And this is a mental health thing, Raj. I mean, we're working more hours than we ever worked before. Uh, and uh, Microsoft knows it. <laughs> they, can, they can track that data. Um, anything you wanted to lay around about this one, Raj? Yeah, I think this is just another lovely example of flipping the script where, you know, you tend to think this is all about efficiency, but Microsoft is understanding, as Ron just mentioned, that we are all working so hard. How do they add an opportunity for us to have these check-ins with ourselves, but also with our team? So uh, it really is a, a great product that has certainly helped us, you know, be able to be much more productive. Uh, you know, we basically, after HEC last year, uh, two days later, sent everybody home for a few weeks and, uh, you know, haven't had the full office back for a year. And Teams allowed us to just jump in and go. So we're very appreciative of it. know there are a lot of other mediums, but this is a great example of brand care for sure. Let's go to the next slide. So Driftwell is a really fascinating uh, product. In September of 2020, Pepsi announced the launch of this product. It's a beverage to help consumers unwind before bed. And uh, the product contains 20 milligrams of lethane and 10% of magnesium. And these two ingredients are proven to reduce stress. And what's really interesting about this is it's a seven and a half, half ounce can and it's a still beverage. And obviously Pepsi's primary business is providing us all with a lot of caffeine. So here's just another example of flipping the script and sort of saying, hey, these are some pretty stressful times. Let's create a nice product that keeps people within our brand family that can help people unwind at the end of the day or whatever time of the day is their end of the day. Anything you want to lay around yeah. on? Just that um, I love the fact that this innovation actually came from within Pepsi. Um, this is someone within the company saying, hey, wait a second. <laughs> We're caffeinating the heck out of people. Um, maybe we need to, to help them wind down. And I'm going to make a prediction here. We don't usually make predictions. Uh, on this show, but I'm going to make one right now, which is, I think that if the 2010s, the 20 teens was about being caffeinated, and there are plenty examples of making the most uh, use of every minute of your day in order to keep up with this kind of fast pace of connectivity, I think that the 2020s are going to be about slowing down. I think it's going to be about um, enjoying life a little bit more, getting, understanding the quality of sleep, um, and understanding the effects of what caffeine and blue light and screen time and all those things are actually having on our, on our mental health and our physical health. Couldn't agree with you more. And interestingly, um, Accenture predicts that you know, 2020 and this whole decade is going to be the decade of the home and people just spending more time at home working from home. And obviously the pandemic has you know, pushed us forward in, in that regard in a big way. So I, I think you're they right. They predict so. it. Did they predict that before the pandemic or? No, that, they, predicted that, they predicted that, you know, during. Uh, <laughs> that, that would have been an amazing uh, prediction prior to the pandemic. People would be spending more time at home. Yeah, um, let's, let's, let's jump on to the next slide, please, and thank you. All right. So, um, admittedly, I am a Headspace user, but I am not a Hinge user. Um, but I, Julie say. <laughs> my <laughs> wife would, uh, if she's watching this right now, would be glad to know that. Um, so uh, again, this is about brand care, people. This is the category about what brands can do to help people um, in their lives, particularly as it relates to healthcare. So it's um, what what Hinge and Headspace have done is they've teamed up to say, "Hey, look, dating is um, is a." That, that is a stressful thing to do. You're going on a first date with somebody. What can they do to ease some of the tension in an already tense time? And particularly dating now, my goodness, uh, it, as if online dating wasn't already 
uh, something that might be anxiety uh, ridden. So you can meditate now um, using some meditation apps that Headspace has provided um, prior to reaching out to somebody or prior to a date. So I just love the fact that um, Hinge is recognizing the fact that this is stressful and what can they do to ease some of that stress. Yeah, and just to layer onto that, another unbelievable statistic, Cigna did a global survey last year at the end of the third quarter, and they determined that 83% of us throughout the world are for having some form of stress. So offering a tool like this, this kind of brand care relationship to sort of help someone feel a little less stressed before having a date or just taking advantage of it uh, to help you have a better day is a great example of a partnership that makes sense. And and obviously is one that could occur in the hospitality industry as well. Thanks, Raj. Let's go on to the next trend, and why don't you talk about this one? I will. Really? Or uh, next example, sorry. I thank you. Yeah, this is another great example of Little, and it's a um, healthcare solution around safety, and it's, it really helps people feel more comfortable about you know, public spaces. And Little is a European company that now has – locations here, and they announced that they plan to install hospital air-grade inf uh, infiltration systems, air infiltration systems, excuse me, and locations uh, throughout the U.S. They've already installed them in Europe, and what's interesting is they're already very concerned about the quality of air and the environment for their customers and team members, but they're now putting in these MERV 13-level filters, the kind of filters that you find in hospitals, and they actually can remove virus-containing droplets. So this is a lovely example of brand care in that it not only relates to the consumer and the people they're trying to bring in, but it also you know, takes care of the team member. And then it's also something you not only, it's a statement that not only you can make, but you can prove it because you're using technology that is presently used within a medical environment. So it sort of hits the ball out of the park of doing everything you need to do to be authentic in a brand care solution. Anything you want to lay around, Rob? Just that it's this is highly uh, repeatable. <laughs> I mean, right. air filtration systems are something that we can all be paying far more attention to. This virus happened to be an airborne virus, uh, and there was a lot more concern around um, around air quality and air movement in spaces. Uh, and it was good to see that um, this company was was enhancing um, the quality of the air in their spaces. Let's move on to the next slide and answer the question about what next and what next for hospitality. And by the way, the way this slide is designed is we're talking about the major category overall in the, um, the black colored font. And then for, uh, for the implications for hospitality, we're moving to fuchsia there. Um, but let's talk about this, uh, Raj. I'll cover the first one, and then why don't you cover this second and third? I'll cover the last one. Sounds great. Um, but, but on... Um, so, so what, what next, right? What, what, are, what, what, what is going to happen now as a result of brand care? What does this evolve into? And, and the answer is it relates to empathy messaging is that it's time for us to practice some empathy and show that you understand your consumer's needs, particularly as it relates to, to um, mental health and health care. And, um, and, and one of the ways that um, we're citing as an example of what might be next for hospitality is that setting hotel and restaurant guest minds at ease is absolutely an imperative. Look, it is, uh, if anyone has been traveling over the last 12 months, you know that this is a new uh, set of, of kind of circumstances and limitations. And uh, it's nerve wracking, frankly. So anything that we can do is critically important. And if we can showcase Whatever it is, it could be ch uh, change cleaning protocols. Um, that's just the beginning. Other things that we can do that recognize that this is a really stressful time to travel and that we can put your mind at ease is critically important. And look, we do it in our own offices. We do it when people are visiting and we're taking their temperature and we're cleaning surfaces constantly and we're asking them to fill out a form before sitting down in our, our conference room. All of those things are saying, hey, we know this is hard for you. We're going to take care of you as best we can. Raj, you want to cover ethical empathy? I will, I will. Uh, so this is just an example where, from a mental health perspective, having professionals guide the solutions that you're bringing or have data for people. If you're making statements in relationship to things, make sure that you can actually authenticate that. So using technology in a hotel that we just co-developed in Minneapolis that opened on December 3rd in the jaws of the pandemic, 
if you'd like, uh, it's a tribute hotel. It's called the Rantar Hotel. You can check into rooms where we have enhanced air quality monitoring information that can give you every bit of detail as to the quality of that air product. We certainly are not indicating that if you stay in this room, it's not you're not going to be able to get the COVID-19 virus, but we're letting you know exactly the content of what is in the air and providing that kind of information on demand, demand using technology to make people feel better about their travel experience is a terrific one. Another example, we've partnered with LG in a hotel that we're a co-owner in outside of Chicago here, a resort near at Lincolnshire, where we have a robot that goes into rooms, uses the UV lighting to sanitize the rooms for an extra level of sanitary care if somebody wants that extra degree of assurance that their room is 100% in that case can be confirmed COVID-free. So it, that, those kinds of examples are great examples of empath ethical empathy. The relationship to sort of asking your staff as it relates to brand here, Ron talked a little bit about uh, this great example of the Driftwell product. And what was cool about that is it was a company competition, much like you know an internal shark tank where they came up with uh, Driftwell and then we did the same thing when we relaunched the Hotel of Tomorrow project. We asked our entire company, both domestically and internationally, to get involved with coming up with ideas to help in relationship to wellness for the hotels that we're co-owners in and the hotels that we work on. All over. Restarted uh, and amplified over the course of the 2020 year with over 300 participants, including Cornell University, Thank you, Cornell, for your contribution, but also hotel owners and operators, designers, architects, um, investors, and was all envisioning the future of the hospitality industry in light of the change reality brought on by the pandemic. So um, if you're interested in the Hotel of Tomorrow project, by the way, you can go to hotel-of-tomorrow.com. That's our website. And you can learn more about it, and there should be an active, I hope the Contact Us button is active. Um, if not, send me an email. My email address will be at the back end of this presentation. So the last fourth thing about brand care and what is next and what is next for the hospitality industry is to go beyond the obvious, right? There are obvious, and frankly, I think that just cleaning protocols are the obvious. Um, this is endless opportunities to explore, right? And I'll give you one example. We had... The, the honor, and I mean that truly, I don't just use that in a cavalier way. We had the honor of working with Hilton on the development of the new Tempo brand that was rolled out just prior to the pandemic a year ago. Um, and one of the things that um, the team did at Hilton was include Ariana Huffington and um, Thrive Global uh, to help create in-room on-screen mindfulness programming. and. That is just a way of extending that brand care into the hotel guest room uh, for those guests. So let's move on to the next trend or we will absolutely run out of time, which I expect we will. Um, <clears throat> and if, if we do, then we do. So uh, advance the slide, please, and thank you. Okay, so we talked about brand care. That is absolutely a trend that has been accelerated by the 2020 pandemic. Um, what is another one? Well. It's creativity um, being utilized to help advance um, innovation within companies. It's called Creative Challengers. And it isn't just that there are lots of interesting creative outlets. I'm a sourdough bread maker these days, people. A rock star, um, but a rock star sourdough bread maker. <laughs> I've had plenty of time to get good at it, Raj. Um, uh, but but how, how can the companies harvest some of that brand enthusiasm? Let's move on to the next slide, please, and I'll explain why this has happened now. Well, of course, there are three reasons that we're going to talk about. One is the creative elite. The second is the skill sprint, and the third is creative therapy. What do we mean by that? In the creative elite, we mean that there is plenty of creative genius out there, and there's lots of ways to share the creativity and be rewarded for it. And it might be uh, an idea that you source uh, support for on Kickstarter, or it might be something that goes viral that, um, that you know, on TikTok or one of the other social media platforms. The next is skill sprint. Um, consumers are thinking, hey, I'm stuck at home. I might as well gain some knowledge or engage in creative pursuits. And so there's been a huge uptick in online learning. Um, sorry, for Cornell students. Um, 
And there's also just been a lot of creative creativity and creative outlets. Um, by the way, everything in my house is now covered by um, uh, yarn. My wife has been crocheting constantly. Um, and then there's creative therapy, which is, um, look, this is helpful for you to get engaged in creative activities. We know more about what happens to your stress reduction as a result of doing that crochet uh, and 45 minutes of a little bit of creativity really helps alleviate anxiety. So those are the reasons why. Why more creativity during the pandemic? There's your answers. Let's move on to the next slide, please. And I'll give you a first example of how brands are embracing that opportunity for creative expression. So Samsung did something fun with the design magazine, um, Design, if you guys are familiar with that. And it was a comp competition they called out of the box. And what they did was they... Um, had a, a competition for people to reuse Samsung boxes in creative ways to create items for the home. Uh, and they came up with some really cool ideas. Incidentally, that little bear that you see in the foreground was part of the winning team submittal, um, which ended up being uh, kind of a whole bunch of animals that were uh, on the endangered species list. But, but a really fun way of saying, hey, how do we... How do we give people something to be creative with and get brand credit for it? Let's move on to the next one, and you can cover. Oh, this one was supposed to be you, Roger. Yeah, no worries. No worries. That's cool. A cool you thing want... to add. I'm oh, sorry, Ron. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say a cool thing to add on that last slide that Ron just uh, talked about is even before they started this competition, uh, their boxes were designed in a way that you could scan a QR code and turn their boxes into a cat house or a TV council, all kinds of really interesting things that were environmentally incredibly sensitive. All right, let's jump to the next one, our sweet home Chicago. I'll do this one and you could do the next one just to keep us on, Roger on that. back on track. Sorry about that. No worries. So, so there was a competition here in the city of Chicago for design and architecture solutions for how to do outdoor dining. Um, and it was a really cool online competition. It was sponsored by the Chicago Tribune and the city of Chicago. Um, I think I'm giving Trib the credit they deserve there. I know the results were published in the Trib. One of our um, architects actually submitted a plan that was pretty similar to this one, actually. Um, but it was how do we take um, some of those creative architects and designers out there and ask to solve a bigger problem of safe outdoor dining? Uh, and they had tons of submittals. I can't remember um, how many submittals they had. 600 submittals, 13 uh, countries. Super cool. And there was some cash prize money too, wasn't there, Raj? Yeah, $5,000 of the cash prize for the top three. And then all the rest of our tours got to use the uh, you know, tech, in essence, and in intellectual property to build structures. And the structures here are pretty darn permanent because <laughs> of the elements we have. Well, um, it's just another great example of how do you tap into the creativity of uh, the community. Um, and this was a great solution. And, and I've, I've dined in, in something a lot like this recently uh, with just my family uh, and I felt safe and uh, it was, it was a great experience. Let's move on to the next one, please. And yeah. Raj, why don't you cover this one? Thank you. Uh, this is, this is a really fun one that occurred in the second quarter of 2020 when Heinz launched its Making Art with the Times campaign in Brazil to encourage people to stay at home and practice social distancing as well as get creative. On Instagram, Heinz posted a blank silhouette of a hamburger, and then the company encouraged followers to draw and dream of their favorite burger and create a template. Then Heinz teamed up with a bunch of local burger chefs and selected the top designs, and then get this, the, top, the winners got to get their beautiful burgers delivered to their homes to taste and enjoy. So just a, a really nice example here, and, and a ton of fun. Yeah, I thought about this, there? Raj. Yeah, no, I just thought about the fact that my cooking skills have improved over the course of the past year. Um, and of course they did. I had to cook a lot of meals. Um, so I think it's fun to tap into that that kind of creative community around food and beverage. And uh, we have a few more examples of food and beverage creativity a little further on in the deck. Let's move on to the next slide and, and talk about um, the CD Project Red. So, all right, I'm assuming there are actually some young gamers from Cornell on this, on this uh, call. And my son fell into the category of, uh, of, of one of those 
disgruntled gamers who is upset that Cyberpunk 2077 got delayed again. Um, by the way, this game is being hailed in, in advance as being one of the most breakthrough kind of games for technology and visualization. But anyway, so what what did what did the the game studio do? Um, CD Projekt Red, in in response to some of that frustration, is they hosted an online uh, global cosplay contest to dress up like your favorite characters from the game. And what you ended up with was um, all kinds of amazing costumes and brand loyalty. And there was prize money and everything else. But again, tap into that dormant creative community. Let's move on to the next one and take us into space, Raj. Oh, man, and I love this one. And you think about some of the things that we got to feel good about during this crisis, and that was seeing Elon Musk and NASA accomplish what they did. But this is a super cool challenge. So this is called the Lunar Loo Challenge. And it was uh, the idea was to create a new toilet uh, for astronauts. And this competition was launched in 2020, and it's in preparation of the Artemis Project. And if you're not familiar with that, that's – NASA's uh, race to get to moon for the first woman that'll be on moon on the moon and a man and we're going to be building a base there that then is going to be used to go to Mars and the goal was to create a toilet that would not only work in lunar gravity but also in microgravity and the current models only work in microgravity and some big prizes here the prizes here are up a total of $35,000 US and this was open to professionals and students under 18 so just a wonderful way to you know, create this kind of connectivity and have us all reach for the stars and think to the future. So I uh, lo- love this example to share with all of you. Love that reach, reach for the stars uh, line. That was awesome, Raj. Um, let's move on to the next slide and I'm gonna recap what next and what next for hospitality around creative challengers. Okay, so really four things I'll cover. the. F- you cover the first two, I'll cover the last two, Raj. Let me just headline them. Sure. So. Again, how do we tap into the the dormant creativity um, during the pandemic? There's a way to look at um, levels of expertise differently. I don't think I could design the next toilet um, for NASA, but some people can. There are experts in lots of these things. Um, There's certainly an opportunity to dip your toe and try new things. Remember, ideas can come from anywhere. Um, Let's figure out ways to tap into a much broader community and then there is an opportunity for uh, collaboration as a means of building even a bigger connection between your brand and your uh, consumer or guest. Raj, do you want to cover a little bit of an explanation around where things might go next for hospitality around the first two? Sure, well, uh, so for an easy, medium, hard expert, great example, Ron alluded to the Hotel of Tomorrow project earlier. We created a way for individuals to dive in and be collaborators and we also created a way for people to be members. And we had over 100 collaborators and over 300 members. And it was a really nice way for people to either dive in deep, use it as a way to you know, stretch their minds and have focus on something other than the crisis. And then the others that were just members would tap in on a regular basis and hear what all the collaborators were working on. So that was a great first chapter. And our next chapter uh, that we're launching this year is going to be Hot Ventures. So stay tuned for more information on that. And then as far as dipping your toe in and creating a creative challenge that, you know, can lead to the future, another project we did uh, that came up uh, through the Hotel Tomorrow was Bed XYZ, a really exciting uh, bed solution. And we're now working on that with uh, the Cornell Robotics Labs and some manufacturers to build a test case and, and bring it to fruition. So really two excellent examples of what's next for hospitality and taking advantage of using these creative challenges to improve our industry. Yeah, I I know we've been leveraging Hotel of Tomorrow a little bit um, uh, or a lot of it here in this talk, but um, it really is proof that um, we, we took advantage of the opportunity to be creative during this period of time and do it with our clients and do it with the university and do it with um, manufacturers, et cetera. So that opportunity for collaboration is really, really critical. And just, I'll, I'll give two more examples that relates to number three and four here. Um, I'm actually teaching a, a, a not teaching, I, I'm a, a guest lecturer in one of the professor's courses at Cornell right now around Hotel Tomorrow, where there's an open design challenge to students 
Um, and we just successfully ran a design competition like that at another international university in France. Um, and the idea can come from anywhere. Some of the ideas in the Hotel Tomorrow that we published, like the Hotel of Rover, which is a, a, a RV hotel essentially, um, came out of um, that last design challenge from, from these students. So um, ideas can come from anywhere and we should create mechanisms that allow for input from multiple sources. And then around this notion of collaboration, there are incredible tools for collaboration. Raj, you and I talked about Microsoft Teams, but that's just the beginning. Uh -oh. We used an amazing platform called Battery, uh, two I's at the end instead of a Y, that was an online collaboration platform started by a friend of mine, Chad Reynolds. And, and we couldn't have, we could not have run the Hotel right. Tomorrow project with 325 participants without a platform that everyone could use to share ideas, exchange ideas, and gather. So um, all kinds of ways to collaborate, even if we are physically distanced. All right, so let's move on to our third and final trend that we're going to be covering today. This is the contactless economy. Please advance the slide. Thank you so much. Awesome. So lots of new things happening around how to um, interact with businesses without touching anything uh, or only touching your own stuff. And, um, you know, this has been one of those things that the areas of the economy where it has been accelerated significantly during the pandemic. We're going to give you some examples of that, but let's talk about why now. Uh, let's move on to the next slide, please. Thank you. All right. Three reasons really why um, we have a, a contactless economy. It almost seems too obvious to even talk about, but I'm going to say it anyway. So there's accelerated demand, right? Um, we, we want to remove the human element uh, if we're afraid that someone might give us the virus. So there's lots of reasons why there's increased demand for contactless. The next is we already were seeing contactless transactions gaining momentum, but wow, things have skyrocketed during this period of time. Um, and so transactions that happen cashlessly uh, increased. How about QR? QR codes were around for a long time, but uh, they quickly got adopted as a means of um, seeing a menu or uh, available options and additional information. And then lastly, you know, the world is different, different protocols, different, um, different ways of engaging, different social norms in different countries have created uh, a, a, an opportunity to unify across the globe. So digital transactions and a contactless economy can accelerate that kind of flattening of the world. Um, let's move on to our uh, next slide, please. Thanks. And talk, uh, Raj, I know you love this stat as a, a loyal Starbucks guy. Starbucks, proud supporter of Cornell HEC. Absolutely. And, you know, actually, I did not have the app until the pandemic. So this statistic here where 24% of the transactions at Starbucks outlets were made using the mobile app uh, as of October 2020 stunning but at the same time if i wanted to you know grab a coffee or an opiate on my way to the office that was the only way i was going to get it so and now you know I, I love the convenience of it and that's a lot of what ron and i are going to talk about here in this contactless economy a lot of these trends are just have been accelerated and are going to continue to create opportunity for our industry next slide please so let's take everybody through what the contactless customer journey looks like raj um I'll take this one. You can take the next one. Um, so <laughs> talk about the contactless customer journey, starting with discovery. How do you know what's even out there? Um, and how can you discover more about information uh, that might be a, a kind of underlying information? I'm just going to cite one fun example, which is the first one, which is Volkswagen Australia launched a world's smallest car dealership app. It's an augmented reality app. Um, for those people who didn't want to go visit a car dealership, but were looking to buy a new car. And there were a lot of deals during the pandemic to incentivize car sales because this was an economic uh, crisis as well. Um, let's move on to the next slide. And I'm going to show you guys a picture, a screen grab I did yesterday in my office where I brought the, um, the VW uh, SUV into my office and was able to walk around the car, get inside the car, see the instrument panels, 
And um, this idea that your phone essentially can be the world's smallest car dealership is the idea. And as we see things like augmented reality apps being more ubiquitous, this idea of barriers being removed uh, is pretty incredible and we think is only going to be accelerated uh, as the contactless economy. Maybe we're not worried about the pandemic, but we're just looking for convenience. And Let's move on to the next slide. Yes, go to the next slide. And just to bring it into the hospitality industry, in our, within, our, within the Gettys Group companies, we are using visualization now in ways that we never used before because of this situation we're in. And it's unbelievable the modeling we're doing with our clients right now uh, because we're often working remotely. And it's really helping us get consensus much sooner, get pricing much sooner. And uh, we're really excited about how it's going to improve the, the experience for everyone as it relates to renovating or building hotels. And that's perfect as we get into this next one, demonstration and trial. There are three examples here, but I'm just going to touch on the Lowe's example where the home improvement retailer um, teamed up with a company called JobSite and they created this really nice application that allows you to work with a professional remotely or an augmented reality professional to help you decide the best way to fix a problem within your home or if you are tackling a project. So that same thing could be done in the hotel industry where you're trying to do a site visit for a potential wedding or a bachelorette party or a corporate event. No reason that that kind of AR example and then supplemented obviously also with some humor and human interaction can't be a, a real important trend that we think will be accelerated through this crisis and will be a great opportunity for hotel owners to differentiate themselves in the future. Next slide, please. Yeah, I think it's both an opportunity for human interaction and humor interaction, Raj. I love right. that. <laughs> you know, truly, I, I, I'm not kidding about that. I think that this idea of allowing a brand to amplify its personality and playfulness is important uh, because the stigma associated with technology is that it removes the human from the process um, and maybe too great to too great a degree. So let's talk about how um, contactless customer journey moves on to the order and purchasing. We already talked about a bunch of contactless stuff and we know a bunch of interesting things are happening between your own device and a machine like the Coca-Cola or um, I'm blown away by the Amazon smart stores. If you haven't seen the Amazon Go technology that they're demoing in their own retail stores where you can walk in, pay what you, uh, excuse me, buy, take what you want, put it in your cart and walk out with ever, without ever transacting uh, at a cash register, that is now being um, implemented in other locations. They're licensing their software. Uh, but I love the one in the middle, which is a holographic um, menu. Um, so we're finally getting to a place with holograms where there's uh, more control and uh, you're seeing Hollow Industries as a US-based company that's doing this um, allowing for menu uh, offerings in quick service restaurants. Let's move on to the next one. And, um, oh, wait, I got one more, Raj. This one's mine, okay? I love no, this we, one. This is awesome. We can go to, the next, go to the next slide, please. Thank you. All right, so if you guys haven't seen what Amazon has just launched, it's called Amazon Explore. It is a virtual tour platform that allows you to pay a very little bit, uh, amount of money. I mean, 25 or 30 bucks and have a personal tour in another city in a foreign country by a professional tour guide who can walk you around that city, show you the points of interest, can even take you shopping, will allow you to go into a store and you'll tell them where you want to go, even visually pointing to things uh, and being taken into a store and don't worry, you can buy something and they'll ship it to you. Or you could um, take a cooking class through this same kind of Amazon Explore. This, this tour might end in a fish taco shop and uh, <laughs> learn how to make a fish taco yourself. So um, Amazon, great job continuing to innovate. And um, of course they are at the forefront of content, contactless um, technologies uh, as evident by the fact that um, so many of us have used Amazon during the pandemic. Raj, I'll let you take the next one if we can and advance this. And slide. that's such an amazing idea for the hospitality industry because Imagine being able to bring your family along, you know, hire this professional to be with you when you're in some unique location. And if somebody in the family can't travel, they can feel like they're being with you. So love it. Next slide, please. 
So, you know, this is a really interesting one. And in the interest of time, we'll just cover uh, one of the trends. But as it relates to payment, uh, CVS has partnered with PayPal to roll out uh, contactless payment uh, locations at 8,200 stores in the U.S. So we have credit card cash. You're now going to be able to swipe your QR code, use PayPal, use Venmo. And before we know it, we're going to be using some cryptocurrencies as well. So just a, a really nice example of payment and the innovation that's occurring there. Let's go to the next slide, please. Love the, sh love the shout out there for cryptocurrencies, by the you way. Got it, man. Um, so, le so let's go to the, let's go to the next step of the contactless customer journey, which is delivery and collection. Uh, hey, guess what, everybody? Drone usage is going up and autonomous vehicles are going up and even robot delivery, uh, in locations, in food and beverage locations and elsewhere is going up. It's pretty incredible. Uh, we've been actually talking to SoftBank, uh, thanks for the introduction, Cornell, uh, and Bear Electronics around this robotic server that's delivering food and drink in the example to the far right to customers, and it's using 3D cameras and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. Um, interestingly, where are we really in the delivery and collection phase? It's real, um, and it's being tested, and um, they are eager to test all of these technologies in more locations. So we're going to see a ramping up of this aspect of the contactless customer journey for sure. Raj, you take the next one. If we can advance the slide, please. I look forward to it. So post-sales support. I mean, this is just a, another nice example where there's good, great pull through and relationship to our industry. I'm only going to touch on one of these in the interest of time, but Staples partners uh, with Opturo to do an in-trial of returns for online purchases. This program is going to launch at the end of Q1. So you can bring in anything to a Staples that you bought online. They'll pack it and return it for you. So this is an interesting way of taking their real estate and partnering with someone else. Imagine if one of the big brands that's watching today did that with one of their franchised hotels, whether it be Hampton with thousands of them or Fairfield, and created some partnership which would bring people into a hotel that might not otherwise come there and then be like, gosh, I want to stay here. So this is just a, a really nice example. And then there are a couple other ones here, uh, but unfortunately we aren't going to have time to talk about them. But uh, thrilled that we could share that one with you. But love the Volvo and Instacart one for next time. All right. We'll keep them hanging, Raj. You Let's move it. on to the next, sl next slide, please. And we are going to wrap things up very soon for those of you hanging in there with us. So what next and what next for hospitality around the con contactless economy? Well, basically more of the same is the short answer. Um, you know, there's four things. You're going to have to adapt and pivot, period. Uh, this contactless stuff is not going away. Just because we'll be able to hug each other again soon doesn't mean um, this contactless stuff is going away. <laughs> um, there will be access to all for all. And um, one of the questions that came up in the chat was, what about people uh, with disabilities. Well, you know what? There's been a lot of evolution in contactless economy to help people with limited mobility or capability and also with limited digital skills as well. Um, and then let's not forget people that we are humans at heart um, and uh, humans have to play a role in this. And then lastly, privacy is a critically important part of what happens when everything is electronic. Um, so there's lots of things as it relates to what's next for hospitality. Raj, why don't you cover, I'll cover the first one and the last one. You cover the two in the middle. Let's just talk about what's next for hospitality. Okay, sounds good. So, so adapt, there are motion sensors and voice activation and personal device control in a lot of hotels now, and we're going to see more of it. Um, you know, if you haven't used Hilton's connected room technology, uh, it allows you to control a whole bunch of the things in the guest room, like lighting and temperature, for example. We're going to see even more of that in hospitality. Uh, and we, we've seen it certainly with um, service on demand through text. And we've seen it with contact um, the front desk um, without having to pick up the phone in the room. We're going to see more and more of that. And uh, that technology is just getting better and better. Raj, what's next for hospitality as it relates to access for all? Access for all. Well, here's a fun one. We're, reno we're renovating a hotel in uh, Snowmass, Colorado right now, right so outside of Aspen, and using technology in a safe way there because of the pandemic. A lot more barriers floating around. We put some technology in. 
at off hours, uh, the sliding doors, one will open, then the other will close, and the other one will not open if a bear is in the airlock. So just a fun example of technology, you know, doing the right thing to protect uh, our team members and guests at that hotel. Wait, so, so your interpretation of what's next for hospitality and access for all includes bears as well. Yeah. I mean, why not I love- <laughs> share a fun fact here? <laughs> I love that. Um, how about humans at heart, Raj? What do you think's next for hospitality around that? Well, a cornerstone of one of the things that we believe at the guys group companies is the hello and goodbye. And when we're creating beautiful experiences, whether it be digital or in the built environment, you want to have that. And we used to always have that with uh, a guest uh, when they were greeted. And now, because of this technology that we all carry around, all the brands are offering wonderful, elegant technology for us to come and go from a hotel safely and securely. So we're encouraging hotel owners and operators to make sure to train everyone that's there to still create that eye contact, smile under the mask, or when our masks are down, have a big smile and just thank people for coming or thank people for staying if they're leaving. I just draw a a smile on my mask instead. Speaking of hello and goodbye, we're going to move to goodbye. Could you uh, advance two slides, please? Thank you. All right. So this is the big thank you from Roger and me and the Gettys Group companies. And also, again, a thank you to Cornell and a thank you to Trend Watching for helping us with this. Uh, if you want to learn more about what we talked about, um, feel free to reach out to Roger and myself. Our contact email is right there. Anything you want to say, Roger? I just want to congratulate again the HEC directors and team. You guys rock, super professional. And I look forward, and Ron looks forward, if you guys are kind enough to invite us uh, next year to be there. Can't wait to be there in person, and best of luck. And as I started said at the beginning, we're on a nice trajectory uh, for recovery, and let's keep moving forward. So thank you. All right. Go get them. Thanks, everybody.